All right, here we are. We're starting. Hey, man, it's good to see all of you this morning. I hardly knew what to do when people were coming a half hour early for church today. It was kind of interesting. You know, um, daylight saving time isn't yet, but it's coming. I'm sorry to tell you, I, I know I shouldn't have said that at all, but Oh, that's right. We fall back, so we get another hour of sleep coming up here. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, good. <clears throat> well, super. Well, we'll just start out with a few announcements as we get going. Um, uh, we'll have prayer tonight at 630 and worship with that. And, you know, if you uh, need prayer or you just uh, want to come and... and and uh, experience the worship and just our time of uh, being in the Lord's presence, just feel free to come at 6.30 tonight. And then 6.30 also on Wednesday, we'll have uh, some uh, worship and Bible study. We always, or at least I always like that. I don't know if anybody else does, but I do. So uh, men's Bible study at 12.30 on Thursday, 12.30 to 1.30. That's uh, really turning into a great time. It's just a, a real positive time for us to get together. And then next Sunday night is going to be a little bit different. So that's, I want you to plan that. Next Sunday night at 6, at six, we're going to join with First Open Bible over at Beaver and Hickman. And we're going to have a service together. And um, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a, a great time. So it'll be a, it's planned to be a one-hour deal starting at six o'clock so just come over we're gonna sing some old songs and uh, pastor josh will be bringing a message and it'll just be a good time for us to think about the lord so let's pray together father we thank you for this day lord what a good day it is to be gathered together together Lord, to know You and to spend time in Your presence. Lord, we pray that You would open our eyes today to things that we haven't seen. Open our ears, Lord, to things that we haven't heard. And Lord, remind us of things that we have seen and heard. Lord, that when we leave here today, Lord, we'll know You better. And we'll be walking closer to You than we did before. Guide our steps, dear Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to sing? Yeah. Ready to do a little worship and singing this morning? So we're going to start with uh, um, In the Secret and just talking about being in that quiet place with the Lord. And so uh, as we do that, just prepare your hearts and just uh, be ready for to experience the Lord's presence this morning. In the secret, in the quiet place, in the stillness, you are there. In the secret, in the quiet Sing that one more time. In the secret, in the quiet place, in the stillness, you are there. In the secret, in the quiet hour, I wait only for you, because I want to. Receive the prize. 
pressing onward, pushing every hindrance aside, out of my way, cause I want to starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus, cause your name is power, your name is healing. Jesus. 
Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. within your presence I speak Jesus Lord we thank you for your name it is above every name there's power in the name of Jesus as we speak it over our lives and the lives of our families Lord your name, O oh Lord, changes circumstance. Holy is your name, O oh Lord. Holy is your name. Holy Lord. Thank you, Father. We remember. We know our lives without you. What our lives are without you. That we are not capable, Lord. was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside there at the cross you paid the debt I owed broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had hoped thank you Jesus for the blood applied thank you Jesus it has washed me white thank you Jesus you have saved Yes. 
inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my Sing thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life and brought me from the darkness into glory. stronger than oh the wonder working power of the blood the blood that calls us sons and daughters we are ransomed by our father through the blood the blood there is no stronger than oh the wonder working power of the blood the blood that calls us sons and daughters we are ransomed by our father through the blood the blood For the blood applied, thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life and brought me from the dark. Glory to His name. There on the cross, the blood of Jesus was applied to our lives. And that blood cleanses us, the Bible says, it washes us from all unrighteousness. All of the things in our lives that are contrary to God the blood of Jesus washed us. Washes us. Makes us clean. You know, we're justified by faith, Paul tells us. That word justified means it's just as if I never sinned. It's hard to explain. We don't understand how the blood of Jesus washes us, but it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That's what that song means. The blood of Jesus is applied. It's like He pours it over. He paints us 
He washes us. He cleanses us with that. That's what makes us right before God. It's not by anything we have done. We believe. We trust. And Jesus says, here, you rely on Me. I wash you with My blood. You know, we talk a lot about the fruits of repentance. That our lives, when we follow Jesus, there is evidence in our lives. That's fruit of repentance. But the fruit, the things we do because we love God, don't make us loved more by God. They don't make us more acceptable to Him because the Bible tells us that while before we ever turn to Him, God the Father sent Jesus for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. I feel like a teacher sometimes in school. You know how we learn things in school and then there's and then there's always a test. But what comes before the test? After we've learned things in school, what comes before the test? Anybody? Study time, right? It's review, right? We go over what we've learned. And so we're going to do a little review this morning, which is kind of in our habit, especially when the messages seem to come together, flow together, and bring us to a third place. And so, a couple weeks ago, before... How many of you enjoyed Bill Adams last week? Anybody? I mean, I enjoyed Bill Adams last week. It was just... Yeah, it's a, it's a unique time. And I've, I'll be honest with you, and I, I hope Bill's not watching, but um, I really... Um, you know, Bill's 91. And I really wanted to get him to minister to us before he went home to see Jesus. Because so. one of these days, he's going to go. Good for him. Hang on just a second. You know, we get here kind of early on Sundays. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes. I'm not even going to comment on that comment, but that's okay. So, so we, get here, we get here about 8 o'clock on Sundays, you know, when we start at 10. And the reason we do that is because there's always something goes wrong. Electronically, you know, something in the technology. Something always goes wrong. And, and it did this morning too. And, and it was just, it's just great, you know, to be here and... Let God work in us. But a couple weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago actually, we talked about, oops, sorry, this right here, that the fruit will come. Sometimes the fruit in our lives is long in coming. It takes a long time. You know, I know myself and and I even talking with other Christians and you guys I know that sometimes we're frustrated because we're just not growing as fast as we want to grow I'm not talking about the church I'm talking about it in our lives right we're not growing as fast as we want to grow because sometimes you know people don't see in us what God sees God sees things happening at a macro level. He sees things happening at levels that are almost invisible to us sometimes, but He sees it and He nurtures those places of growth. Does that make sense? And so that message really was to help us be encouraged because God is working in hearts that we can't see.
You know, there are circumstances in all of our families that, that we pray over, and, and it was great, you know, um, Rebecca mentioned that she was uh, uncharacteristically early today. And when she came in, the boys were with her, her grandboys. And family circumstances have prevented them from being with us, and they used to be with us all the time. And when they walked through the door, I rejoiced in my spirit. Because I have been an unable, I have not had any opportunity to fix this issue. And yet our God can. He works in places that we can't reach. He can get into places in other people's lives, even other people who don't follow Him and do miraculous things. Because the Word says, God says that the, even the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and God moves it wherever he wants to. So, you know, when you get frustrated with our politics, don't give up. God knows what he's doing. God is doing among us. God is doing things that we cannot see. Yes, amen. We thank thankful for that. So when we failed so many times that people just expect it, Right? You with me? Yeah. Thank you. Life can come. Life can come. So a week before last, we talked about breaking free. Because there are things in our lives that prevent the fruit from happening. There are things in our lives that we struggle with that, that we really feel bound to or chained to sometimes. And I'm not just necessarily talking about uh, things of the demonic or uh, things in the spirit necessarily, although those things influence things in our lives. But there are things that we need to do in order to break free. Sometimes in our minds, we want to break free, and yet we're unwilling to take steps to break free. Does that make sense? So we talked about Zacchaeus and his story and, and how he was in a rut. He was in some kind of spiritual um, um, uh, malnutrition, if you will. And he saw Jesus. And these are kind of the things that we saw that Zacchaeus was in a pattern of spiritual failure. Zacchaeus was a Jew. The Jews had received the promise. They're supposed to have all the spiritual answers to give to the rest of the world. And yet Zacchaeus had obviously, by the fruit in his life, not been living as God wanted him to live. But here's the key. So he saw something in Jesus that he needed. He saw Jesus and said, I need that. I hope you're applying this to yourself as we run through this. And he realized that he could not get there by his usual methods. So we want to grow in the Lord, but all the things that we've been doing don't take us to the place that we've been wanting to go. Zacchaeus saw that. He found a deficiency in his life and realized that he had to do something to get out of that. Because you realize that climbing trees was not what Zacchaeus did as a, as a lead tax collector for the Romans. That was not what he did. right? He wasn't known as Zacchaeus the tax collector, a.k.a. tree climber. right? So... But here's what, he, what we realize, that without the tree climbing experience, there would have been no change. He would not have seen Jesus. He, Jesus would not have seen him. And Jesus would not have come to his house. 
So he made this decision to climb this tree, and this decision that was outside of his character, and think about yourself, this decision that was outside of his character was ridiculed by those who watched his life. But he had to do it. And that was the key that opened the door to the fruits of repentance that Jesus saw because he said this to Jesus, the way I was, I took. The way I am, I give. Life change. Life change when we take steps that break our patterns. That's how we begin to see fruit come in our lives. Today we're going to talk about a subject that we've uh, looked at somewhat over the years. That the proper answer when God speaks is yes. You know, Zacchaeus didn't climb the tree because he just had some random thought. Oh, I'll climb a tree. Right? No, he, he knew that Jesus was coming. And I believe the Holy Spirit put a thought in his mind. You can get up there, you short little man. You can get up there and see better if you climb the tree. You guys ever climb trees? No. no. Never? It's dangerous. Well, you know, I think Zacchaeus knew that too. But as a man, he took the risk. Right? So we're going to read a story that's familiar to everybody, hopefully. And we're not going to read the whole book, but we're going to read um, the story of Jonah. So anybody know anything about Jonah? Kids, you know anything about Jonah? Ever heard of Jonah? No? Well, you are right now. Here you go. So the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Incidentally, Nineveh was about 800 miles away from Jonah, and Jonah didn't have a car. Okay? 800 miles. So you figure out how far it takes to go 800 miles on foot. He says, announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He did that because Nineveh was the capital city of the enemy. Jonah knew how wicked they were, and Jonah did not want any part of Nineveh turning to God. He wanted God to destroy Nineveh. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused this terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us, they demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, 
I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop this storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is my fault. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to land, but the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. O oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death, O oh Lord. You have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea. And the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power and they offered Him a sacrifice and vowed to serve Him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great trouble, and he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence, yet I will once more look toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves, and the waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth whose gates lock shut forever. But You, O Lord my God, snatched me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord and my earnest prayer went out to You in Your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies. But I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise. And I will fulfill all my vows. For my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Then the Lord ordered the fish to puke Jonah out onto the beach. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered this city, he shouted to the crowds, Forty days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change His mind and hold back His fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, He changed His mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. So I want us to look at a couple lessons in just a few minutes from the story of Jonah. 
One thing that we need to understand, you see, because we're talking about the proper answer when God speaks is yes. Because here's what happens. No stops God's plan in your life. God is leading us step by step by step. And when we say no, we stop God's plan in our lives. You see, because as in Jonah's case, no causes God to detour to another way of convincing us to say yes. You see, God never intended for Jonah to get swallowed by a fish. That was not God's plan. Jonah didn't know that the eternities of 120,000 people rested on his yes. Do you hear me? Yes. But you see, Jonah's yes... Open the door for God to do great things through him. Jonah didn't know what God was going to do. Jonah had no idea that all of those people would repent and turn to God. So here's the key. Yes is the key to seeing the fruit come in our lives. You know, sometimes the voice of God is soft. Most of the time, I would say. Most of the time, once we learn and know His voice, It's not a beach over the head, knock on your head, go do this. In Jonah's case, it was, yeah, sure. But answering yes is the key to breaking free from addictions and habits. Because He leads us He instructs us. Answering yes is the key to breaking free from ungodly patterns in our lives. Because without a yes, God's plan does not go forward. He moves in us in obedience. And so we see this, that yes opens the door for God's plan to work in our lives. Most of the times when we're frustrated and and it seems like God isn't working in our life, it's because we're not doing what He's instructed us to do. So the obvious question that comes is then, is what does yes mean in your life? That's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it out loud. But still, you know, I I think in my own life, the times that I hear his voice the most subtly, there are times, you know, my quiet prayer time at my house is in the basement. Okay? Our bedroom is on the second floor. And there are times that I wake up in the night for whatever reason. Couldn't be because we don't live in a very quiet neighborhood. But there are times I wake up in the night and I hear the Lord gently say, Come down and pray for a minute. And I'm laying there going, Oh, you're kidding me. Really? Because I got to get up out of my, my warm bed. And go down the stairs and down the stairs and down the stairs. But 
But when I get there, I know that he has called me. What does it mean to say yes in your life? You know, sometimes we struggle with yes. You know, Jesus told this story. We'll read it together. The parable of two sons. Jesus said this. He says, but what do you think about this? So a man with two sons told the older boy, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, no, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. Which of the two obeyed his father? Sure, the first one, even though he said he wouldn't go, his first response was no. His action said yes. The second son said yes but didn't do what he said. And they replied, as you did the first. And so then Jesus explained his meaning. I tell you the truth, corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes will go into the kingdom of God before you do. For John the Baptist came and showed you the right way to live, but you didn't believe him. You said no. While tax collectors and prostitutes said yes. And even when you saw this happening, you refused to believe him and repent of your sins. So what was Jesus saying? This is what Jesus was saying. When we say no, we forfeit the blessings that God wants to do in our lives. Because God depends on our yes. He depends on us saying yes when He urges us ever so gently. You notice with Jonah... Jonah went way out of the way, endured all the storm at sea, nearly drowning in the Mediterranean, getting sucked down by an enormous fish, thrown up on the beach, and what does God say to him? The same thing he said the first time. Go do what I told you to do before when it would have been a lot easier. Because what happens is is we stop the Lord's progress in our lives when we don't say yes. Jonah could have gotten to Nineveh much sooner had he just said yes the first time. He could have seen God's mercy poured out on that city much sooner had he been willing to say yes the first time. So here's a couple things that we learn. That there are times that God's call is part of the instruction to help us learn. We go back to the classroom setting. We learn the basics of hearing God's voice and doing what He says. And then there are times that God's call is a test. And we look, well, I went down and prayed when God told me to. I didn't see anything happen. No. But you were obedient. And then, as in Jonah's case, there are times that our yes to God's call has eternal consequences. Where they change and have effect huge consequences in other people's lives. So back to our story. So, what happened here? Oh, there we go. Jonah knew God's voice. Right? 
He could hear it. He recognized it. You know, he knew what God wanted him to do. But here's the key. He hadn't yet come to the place that he submitted his will to God's will. Do you hear me? He hadn't yet come to the place that he submitted his will to God's will. So when God spoke, he thought he had an option. He thought God was asking for his opinion. Not so. Go means go, right? He hadn't learned what Jesus teaches us. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, when You speak in heaven, You get Your way. When You speak in my heart, You get Your way too. Jonah hadn't learned that yet. So, so Diane and I, we had three children. We still have three children. But when they were all under 10, Diane and I decided to practice, to, to take on this practice of teaching our children first time obedience. Anybody know what that is? So, first time obedience is like this. So, the children learn that mom and dad will not repeatedly ask you to do something. Okay? So, we expect you to come when we say, do what we say. When we say to do it. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? <laughs> I hear those nervous chuckles. So, so what happens then, so the consequences that would normally come after the second, third, or fourth warning, or maybe never at all, will come after the first instruction goes unheeded. So you ignore mom and dad the first time, you're going to get the consequence. You know, our kids weren't perfect, and neither were we, but it was somewhat successful. So I think our son, Ryan, was about 12 when this happened. It was a Sunday afternoon, a beautiful, sunny Arizona day. And Ryan was outside playing and across the street with the neighbor kids. And I was preparing to go to church for something. I guess the rest of the family would come later. So, the doctors had been working on my heart. I've had rhythm problems with my heart most of my adult life. And so they were trying to fix some arrhythmias with this new medication. Okay, And I was on the third day of this medication and things were going real good. And so as I walked out the front door to my truck, to leave for church, my body all of a sudden decided that the medicine wasn't good anymore. All of a sudden, my heart rate starts going upwards of 300 beats a minute. Those of you who don't know, that's not real good. So I was able to get to the truck, sit in my seat, and yell Ryan's name before I passed out. Ryan heard me. He came when I called. And he saved my life. You know, I don't know if there was a thought process in Ryan's mind. You know, should I go or not? I want to keep on playing. What does he want now? Or did he just come because it was the right thing to do? You know, it really doesn't matter because the decision was the correct one. Our son said yes. You know, Ryan didn't understand the significance of his yes when he came. My 
calling of his name probably sounded like it did many times. It was just, Ryan! But it was significant, not in just his life, but in the lives of others. You know, Jesus said yes. He said, yes, I will go to the cross. You know, the rich young ruler that we've talked about many, many times that came to Jesus and wanted to follow Jesus and all that, he, he stopped what Jesus wanted to do in his life because he wasn't willing to say yes. You know, there was a key point in Jesus' life. You remember when the woman poured the perfume on Jesus? And it was very valuable. It was worth a year's wages. And Judas was so bothered by that that it changed the trajectory of his life. And when Judas stopped the lesson of the perfume from working in his life, he stopped the progress of discipleship in his life. Again, I ask, what has God been saying to you? You know, maybe, maybe he's been asking you to spend a little more time with him at home. Picking up a daily bread. Maybe he's been wanting you to come to one of our evening meetings. Maybe he's been wanting you to gather with other believers a little more often. But God is doing something in you, moving in you to draw you closer to him. Amen. That's what he's expecting. And you see, when he speaks, the proper answer for us is yes. You know, the fruit doesn't come without saying yes. Breaking free doesn't happen without saying yes. You know, like the son, the first son in Jesus' story who said no. You know, he changed his mind. We can too. Maybe we've been saying no. We can say yes. Jonah said no. And Jonah changed his mind. As we sing this next song, I want us, you know, as my dad would say, and you'll hear me say this often, this kind of message really requires a response. From us. And whether it's where you are during this song that we sing, whether you come and kneel here in one of the pews or at the front, somebody needs to say yes this morning. If it's bandaging the broken Or washing filthy feet Here I am, Lord, send me If it's loving one another Even when we don't agree Here I am, Lord, send me if I'm poor or if I'm wealthy, I'll serve you just the same. Here I am, Lord, send me on the mountain or the valley. I will choose to say, Here I am. I'm known by how I love Let my life reflect how much I love you I love you And before you even ask Oh, my answer will be yes
the truth cuts like an arrow, I will say it anyway. Because here I am, Lord, send me. If it means that they'll reject me, Lord, I will still obey. I'm known by how I love Let my life reflect how much I love you I love you And before you even ask Oh, my answer will be yes Yes, I love you standing in your glory I'll be glad I chose to say here I am Lord send me well done good and faithful I live to hear you say here I am Lord send me Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, send me. If I'm known by how I love, let my life reflect how much I love you. I love you. And before you, will be yes cause I love you I love you if I'm known by how I love let my life reflect how much I love you I love you and before you even ask oh my will be yes cause I love you I love you Lord I love you Lord I love you Lord I love you here I am Lord, we've nodded our heads a lot this morning as we've heard your voice call to us. Lord, I pray that you give us courage. Help us, Lord, to be willing to say yes. Lord, that you be able to do in us what you desire. Lord, that you be able to do in us what we desire. Lord, that we stop wallowing in our trouble. We stop wallowing, O oh Lord, looking forward to the things that you might do in our lives, O oh Lord. And all the while, we just need to say yes. Lord, help us see what you want us to see. To hear what you want us to hear. Yes. Yes, Lord. Father, go before us. May our eyes be more clear 
to see what you want us to see this week. Let our ears be more attentive to your still, small voice. Lord, that when we come back, meet together, Lord, we'll see where we have said yes. And know that we are in the place that you long for us to be. We're not there yet, but we're going there. In Jesus' name. So does that make sense? Yeah. You guys were great. You kids were great today. Just great. I didn't have high hopes when we started. <laughs>